ring of the bell. Toby had been welcomed warmly on Thomas's branch line. He loved chuffing through the village, cheerfully ringing his bell as people waved. The villagers were quite taken with their new tram engine, much to Thomas's chagrin. One evening, Toby and Henrietta were bringing the workmen home from the quarry. The tracks, loaded with stone, rattled behind them. They had just left the quarry and were crossing the road when they heard an awful noise. Toby stopped, the trucks blocking the road. The driver and guard went along the train looking for the problem. One of the trucks bake slipped on Chobe, the driver explained. It must have been loose. Won't take long to fix. Toby sat patiently as the crew tended to the truck. Suddenly, he saw something up the road. The constable who had given Thomas trouble came speeding towards him on a bicycle. Hello, 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 what's going on here? demanded the constable. Trouble with the whacking brake, sir, Toby explained. Won't be long until we're on our way. This won't do, grumbled the constable. You are blocking a busy public road. Toby glanced up and looked down the road. There wasn't a car in sight. Uh, it doesn't look to be very busy at the moment, sir, Toby remarked innocently. Don't get smart with me, snapped the constable. You engines are nothing but lawbreakers. He scribbled furiously in his notebook. Then he stormed back to the guard and thrust a ticket towards him and rode off in a huff. Obstruction of traffic, the guard cried, nonsense. When the truck's brakes had been fixed, Toby set off, Why dumbfounded. I don't understand. Toby said to Thomas that night. There wasn't a car to be seen. I think that constable has it in for us. Sir Topham Hatt will not be happy about that ticket. Thomas snorted. Perhaps you're not the solution he thought you'd be after all. Thomas shut his eyes and promptly went to sleep. Toby chuckled and followed suit. Outrageous! Sir Topham had shouted the next morning as he furiously hung up the telephone. He leaned back in his chair and sighed heavily. The butler came in. More coffee, sir? Yes. More coffee is certainly welcome, Winston, he remarked. These policemen are more trouble than they're worth. He sipped his coffee, pondering what to do. Later that day, Toby was heading along the farm lane with some trucks. He was still cross over what happened, and the trucks knew they had best behave themselves. As he came up the line, he could see the constable on his bicycle. Toby exited the lane and just started through the town, where a car shot in front of him. Oh! Toby cried, look out! The constable hadn't heard the car, but he was headed right towards him. Without hesitation, Toby rang his bell loudly. The constable heard that. He fell off his bicycle onto the sidewalk, just in time to avoid the car. It sped off down the road and disappeared. Toby halted right near where the constable sat, bewildered. Are you alright, sir? he asked. Just what do you think you're playing at? demanded the constable, rubbing his back. But the car... Stew it! barked the constable. I'll be reporting you for this! Mark my words! Before Toby could reply, Bernie the bus came roaring. Toby, are you alright? The car didn't hit you, did it? No, Bertie, I'm fine. Thank goodness! He gave my passengers a good fry! That was some quick thinking on your part. What is this? demanded the constable. You're in cahoots with this engine. The driver and passengers stormed out of Bertie and marched up to the constable. Look here, fumed the driver. Toby's a hero. If it weren't for him, you'd... You'd... Well, you'd be in a very sorry state, let me tell you. Now, will you stop pestering Toby and try catching the real criminal? He finished, pointing at the car. The passengers, continuing to scowl at the constable, mumbled in agreement. Uh, well, I... He stammered. I couldn't have put it better myself. 
Everyone turned to see the Fat Controller and the Chief of Police. First, Sir Tottenham began, you disrupt the work of my engines. Now you pin the blame on someone else's actions on them. I must say, Constable, your actions don't leave me with much faith in the police. I assure you, Sir Tottenham, grumbled the Chief, will be taking action to ensure this never happens again. He motioned angrily for the Constable to follow him. Sorry, he stammered, after silently walking after the chief. I don't think you'll be having any further issues with him, Sir Topham Hatt chuckled, winking at Toby. Toby had never been so relieved. That night, Toby backed into the sheds to find Thomas smiling. Well done, Toby, he chuckled. Oh, nothing to it, Toby said modestly. You've got to look out for people on your line, no matter their behavior. Not that, Thomas replied. I mean the constable. You should have seen how he jumped when you rang your bell. Not so tough after all, I suppose. Toby smiled. It certainly hadn't been done for a lot, but he couldn't help feeling that by saving the constable, he'd made a friend of Thomas.